What do Louis XIV of France and the American writer Ernest Hemingway both have in common? Mmm, tricky question. The answer, they both fell in love with a certain French rosé, which is coming right up. Hi guys, welcome to yet another edition of Big On Wine, the show which, uh, as you should know by now, brings you all the news, reviews and clues. In fact, it brings you up to speed with just about everything in the world of wine. And yes, indeed, the wine uh, with which both Louis XIV of France and Ernest Hemingway fell in love was this one here. And it goes under the name of uh, Gigal Tavel, and the uh, vintage is uh, 2017. And this wine comes in for a price where I am of just under 19 euro a bottle. So a fairly solid price for a rosé wine. But of course, it does come from the uh, very, very long established and uh, uh, having a great reputation, the firm of Gigal from the Southern Rhone. Okay, let's tell you something about this wine. It is in fact produced by the uh, long established company E. Gigal, and they are pretty much synonymous with high quality wines from the Southern Rhone area of France. Um, and the wine is indeed Appellation Tavel Controlé. Now, Tavel is a small wine area close to the city of Avignon in the south of France, obviously in the Rhone Valley. The Rhone River flows through Avignon. On the other side of the river, on the east side of the river, there is the world famous area of Chateauneuf du Pape, uh, famous, of course, for its red wines, and on the west bank of the river is the Tavel area, which produces wines which are both red and rosé. Okay, now you can't blend uh, red and white wines together in France to produce a rosé, apart from in the production of Champagne, but you can blend uh, grape varieties which are both red and white at the initial stage of pressing and maceration. So in this wine here we do in fact have four different varieties and those varieties are the red Grenache Noir, the Syrah and the Sanso and there's also a touch of the white grape called Claret also in this wine. So three red and one white variety in this particular wine. Okay, the first thing you notice probably is that in the glass it has an extremely dark colour for a rosé wine and that's because the uh, juice from the grapes is left on the skins for around 8 to 12 hours and that pulls out more um, colour and more tannin as well so this can be considered, I think, probably to be a kind of a king of rosé wines. It's certainly got more body and more colour than normal. All right. The colour of the wine, as we can see here in the glass, is a kind of um, deep, pure kind of salmon pink colour, almost with a touch of orange in it. Um, so rather deeper in colour than we would normally find with a rosé wine. Um, and let's see how the wine gets on in the nose. Let's give it a sniff and see. Now this wine here is um, in the nose, relatively restrained. It smells fruity, um, touch of strawberry, even raspberry in the nose there. It's also rather nicely perfumed. It has a light kind of floral perfume on this wine, but it is that fruit, I think, fruit driven. This one, raspberry, strawberry, maybe something else as well uh, in the mix there. All right, let's try the wine now in the mouth and see what we can find. And very interesting it is too. All right, first impression. This is a full-bodied wine, definitely has more tannins 
than in the uh, what you might call a standard rosé wine. So more body in this wine than usual. It's also super dry. It just has, I think, one gram of residual sugar per litre. So it's an absolutely dry wine. And the taste which immediately comes to the fore here, I think, is of strawberry. But it has a slightly sharper note current in it as well, maybe red currant. The aftertaste is quite long. Um, good acidity, a good body. It has something. What is that other taste in here? Yep, now I've found it. It has something in the taste which is akin to eating a clementine or a tangerine. It has a slightly orange or bitter orange taste to this wine here. So very interesting. Fruit driven, it's got nice structure, good acidity. It's got body, it's got some tannin. Um, strawberry, raspberry notes, maybe red currant and just that little touch of bitter orange in there as well. Very nice indeed. Very different as a rosé. Okay, what are we going to be eating this with? Well, I think this will go with practically anything summery. Probably due to the body of the wine, I think it would probably require something with a little more taste to it. But I can see this wine being successful with veggie dishes, especially with veggie dishes with a little bit more flavour in them, um, chicken, turkey, and even, even, even with seafood, I think this wine would be a success, uh, stretching even perhaps to um, pork or something like that. So in the, in the general direction of um, white coloured meats and veggie dishes, probably. All right, let's bring you the heads up on this one. This wine is different. It's not entirely uh, cheap, but it's not expensive either. Just under 19 euro a bottle. This is Gigal Tavel. And the vintage is 2017. It's a very, very well-made rosé from a producer synonymous with quality. Three red and one white variety in the mix. A gorgeous colour. Full-bodied, but still refreshing. The perfect summer beverage. Uh, slightly upmarket. Serving temperature around the 9 or 10 degrees mark. I'm going to give this excellent rosé four stars out of five. Okay, guys, many, many thanks for tuning in and checking out this week's video and the little intro to an excellent and rather different rosé wine from the uh, Southern Rhone, uh, Gigal's Tavel on the Vintage 2017. Lovely stuff indeed. Okay, if you've enjoyed what you've seen and heard, then please do feel free to give us that big thumbs up, which we uh, enjoy receiving so much. Uh, drop a comment down below. Always uh, very, very interested to receive your comments. Share the video around. Follow me on my other social media platforms. And hey, if you haven't done so already, please do consider subscribing by hitting that big red button somewhere up there behind me. And of course, I'll be back again next week with another great Wine of the Week for you. But until we meet again, this is Tony Melville signing off and saying, hey, take care out there. Be good to each other. Enjoy your wines. And cheers.